I was reminded with all this stuff about uh, free will and determinism about about this article, not an article, an essay actually, in a, in a collection of essays called The Mind's Eye, edited by Dan Dennett and uh, Douglas Hofstede. It's a great collection of essays, by the way, fantastic. But this particular essay is by a guy called somebody Markowitz, I can't remember his first name, Stanley, Harold, somebody, somebody Markowitz. And he's talking about... Uh, and I hesitate to say this, he's talking about quantum physics and psychology. I can't remember the details of it, but the, the, uh, the specific bit I thought was interesting was about the trajectory that those two disciplines, you know, the, the discipline of physics and the, and the discipline of psychology, seem to be taking, uh, or have taken over the last hundred years, you know, in terms of how they talk about themselves or what they think is a, an appropriate topic of, of research. Or, you know, those kinds of areas, really. And what he's basically saying is that psychology over the last 50 years, certainly 100 years, more likely, has, uh, has been increasingly striving to, the, to um, you know, to kind of acquire the condition of physics, really. You know, early psychology, you know, when psychology just, just acquired the name, almost, really, if anything, it looked to um, kind of literature, as a, as a language, you know, if you, if you read Jung or you read Freud or you read anybody who was writing in the early days, even William James, if you look in the early days of psychology, the, the, the language is the language of myth and of anthropology and of gods and narratives and stories and, uh, you know, dramas, these kind of things happening. Uh, so it, and it reads a bit like literary analysis, actually. It reads like, you look at like analysing a play or something like that. And in fact, the, the, that, that reversal has happened. You know, lots of plays and and, and literature now is, an, is analysed using the tools and the language of uh, psychoanalysis. But as I say, those early early writings in psychology tended to lean to that in that direction, almost about writing the, about the psyche as if it was a work of art and using art critical language. But really, since the middle of the 20th century, I would guess probably a bit earlier, since. Um, you know, the beginning of behaviourism, I guess. Uh, there's been this other pull, which has got increasingly large, I think, towards trying to find ways of talking about psychology that owes more to the hard sciences, something like physics. Obviously, behaviourism being the most obvious early example. But much more recently as well, I think, you know, all of the, the moves in cognitive science and uh, neurology and neuroscience. Um, or, you know, I seem to be part of that trajectory. Can we talk about psychology? Can we talk about mind, perception, memory, desire, feeling? You know, all the stuff that's, that psychology addresses. Can we talk about those things in as um, you know reductionistic, and I mean that in a positive sense, and in as precise and in as, as kind of um, rule-bound a way as we talk about physics? Can we find the equivalence of the laws of thermodynamics. Can we, you know, do that kind of stuff? So there's been that move. Uh, conversely, and this is what I thought was interesting in this Markowitz uh, essay, he's pointing to the history, particularly of quantum physics, but not exclusively, as as suggesting that physics has done almost exactly the opposite thing. You know, that for a while, particularly back end of the 19th, early part of the 20th century, you know, physics was discussed and its ambition, its aim was to stay within the language of the of the analytically absolute and the precise. Uh, but since then, increasingly, it's found it impossible to do that. And so, so physics tends to use much more, um, well, use language much more closer to, to the language of the human dramas. You know, much more kind of intentional language, much more language to do with consciousness, much more language to do with... Um, Decision making, beliefs, uh, feeling, all those kind of things. Uh, I think you can see that a little bit, even at, not even at the physics level. I mean, I've got um, you know, a place where I work, the IT guys, they, um, they're always talking about computers in really intentional ways. You know, if my computer doesn't, my printer doesn't work, they'll come along and they'll say, oh yeah, your, your, your computer's not talking to your printer. And it's just loaded with this intentional language. And I was reading about that actually, and um, apparently, because I thought it, you know, my first thought was, 
you know, people like myself who are a bit naive perhaps and not an IT specialist would use more intentional language, but it's not the case. People who are actually in IT use more intentional language about it, more talk more as if computers were people and had psychologies than, um, than novices do, simply because it's the most economical and the most, it captures the best detail about the system if you use that kind of language. Uh, so what's that about then? Yeah, I, I suppose it's just interesting to me that whereas on the one hand psychology in terms of its language and discourse and ambitions seems to be striving towards the condition of physics with its preciseness and its equations and its impersonal, uh, yeah, its ambitions to be impersonal a lot of physics, and perhaps even IT, is heading in the opposite direction, or has headed in the opposite direction. And, uh, you know, people keep talking about consciousness. I don't entirely buy it, but people keep talking about consciousness and uh, observation and all of those kind of human attributes in relation to physics, as if physics is, trying, is striving for the condition of, uh, of the humanities. Weird.